Welcome back to part two of week's one lecture on introducing religion. In this second part, we will be discussing how we are going to study religion in this class and why we should study religion. In the previous lecture, we looked at what religion is and why religion exists. So now we need to come up with a basic game plan for how we will approach the various religious traditions that we'll be looking at in this course. Uh, the first thing I want to mention is that this course is going to be anthropological rather than theological in its approach, and I need to explain that a little bit. Uh, by anthropological, I don't mean that it is um, an anthropology class. What I mean is that it is the study of human beings. Anthro means uh, having to do with human beings. So this is a course that studies human beliefs, human behaviors, human experiences, uh, and it is interested in the way human beings perceive ultimate reality or uh, how they perceive the religious life. <clears throat> it is not a theological class in the sense that we're concerned with discovering what the nature of God is or what the will of God is. So it is a humanities course, and it is focused on the uh, human end of things, we might say. But even within the anthropological approach, there are various ways of studying religion. So religion is just a field of study. It's an object of study uh, that you can apply many different disciplines to. Uh, and we won't have time in this class to apply all of those ways. So we need to narrow down a bit further. And chapter one in the book distinguishes between two broad approaches. One is the evaluative approach in which you attempt to evaluate religious beliefs and practices. And then there is dis the descriptive approach in which you simply try to describe religious beliefs and practices. So the evaluative approach would want to know whether religious beliefs are true, whether religious practices are appropriate or good in some way, whereas the descriptive approaches would not be interested in the question of whether the religious beliefs are true or whether um, the beliefs and are the, whether the practices are good or not. They just simply describe what those beliefs and practices are. Um, and we will primarily be in the descriptive category for reasons I'll explain momentarily. Uh, but under the evaluative approach, <clears throat> there are two sub-approaches. One is the religious approach where one assumes one's own religious position and then evaluates other religions from that perspective. Um, the second one is the philosophical approach in which you try to evaluate religious traditions, not from the standpoint of a religious worldview, but from the standpoint of reason itself. Are religious beliefs rational or irrational? Why or why not? Uh, but we will uh, not be taking the evaluative approach in this class. Instead, we are going to be focused on the descriptive approach and you can see there that there are a number of sub-approaches in that category as well. So I will briefly define those four. Uh, the first, which will be the primary approach in this class, is the phenomenological approach. Uh, phenomenon basically means having to do with the appearances of things. And what the phenomenological approach does is it studies the way in which things appear to the religious believer themselves. So how, do, how does the world appear to the Hindu, to the Buddhist, to the Christian, to the Muslim, uh, to the Jew, to the Confucian, etc.? Um, and so it attempts to bracket off questions about whether these appearances match up with the way things really are, uh, and simply tries to describe the appearances themselves. And that'll be the primary approach we'll take here, and that will require a bit of empathy, uh, that is, trying to step into another person's shoes. It does not mean that you need to accept the religious perspective of these other uh, religious worldviews at all. It just means that you need to try to understand what the world looks like from their particular vantage point. 
The second way is the historical method in which one tries to describe the changes that religious traditions go through over time. We will be doing a little bit of history in this class, but it will not be the primary focus. Uh, we will only do enough history, uh, the minimal amount that we're going to need, we will do. But uh, other than that, uh, we, we will not be focused on the historical perspective. The third is the functional perspective, uh, which tries to describe the way religion functions in other human arenas. So the, the functional approach would want to know how useful religion is. Uh, for instance, what role does religion play in society? How does it keep societies together, or does it? Um, or what is the function of religion and one's own psychology, for example. So psychology of religion, sociology of religion, anthropology of religion, uh, those are primarily functional in approach, and uh, that will not be our focus as well. Again, our focus is simply describing how things appear from the religious perspectives. The fourth way is, which we will make use of as well in this course, is the comparative method. This is comparative religion, after all. And so once we have described the way things appear according to the different religious traditions, we will ultimately want to compare those appearances. Uh, how are they alike? How are they different? And how, very importantly, might we explain those similarities uh, and differences? So this course will be primarily focused on the descriptive approach and more specifically the phenomenological and the comparative. I want to discuss a little bit about what this course is not, just to clarify things uh, as we go along. First of all, as I mentioned before, this is not a course on the history of religion, so we will not be, we, I will talk about major historical phases, but I will not go on an in-depth uh, account of the history of, of religion. Uh, this course is certainly not a complete guide to each religion. Uh, we could spend this whole course on either one of these traditions. In fact, we could spend our whole lives studying any one of these traditions and still not uh, be experts on them. Uh, they are extremely complex, each of them, uh, and so this is just a very broad overview uh, of each of the religious traditions we'll look at. But this is also not a guide to all religions. So again, uh, our time is limited, so I had to make choices on which religions we would cover, and we simply can't cover them all. Uh, I made my choices primarily on the number of adherents of the religions and their influence. So we are going to be looking at the biggest religions in terms of numbers and the greatest religions in terms of influence. Uh, but this course is also not a balanced look at religion in the sense that it focuses more on the ideal than the reality on the ground. So we probably all know that religion can be used for both great good and extreme evil, and all of the religious traditions that we will be looking at have done both. Uh, and so uh, we will be focused more on the ideal, on the good, than the way in which religion has been used uh, for maniacal purposes. But uh, we will occasionally address those uh, as we need be. But it's primarily focused on the ideal. Next, this course is not comparative in the sense of comparing the worth of the various religious traditions. So we're going to compare the uh, essence of these traditions. We're not comparing their worth in terms of figuring out which one is better than the other. I will allow that to do for you to do that on your own if you wish, but before we do that we need to uh, come to some sort of basic understanding as to what these religious traditions teach. Uh, this course is a course that will give privilege to voices coming from within each tradition, so we will be giving privilege to the way Hindus describe Hinduism, the way Buddhists describe Buddhism, the way Christians describe Christianity, etc. Uh, and this is a humanities course, again, focused on uh, 
what it means to be a human being, and it's not primarily a theology course in the study of the nature of God. Uh, this is a course that takes religion seriously, um, and it will be a course that will ask you to listen, to kind of put yourself into somebody else's shoes for a moment. That will take a little bit of imagination and a little bit of courage, but it will be necessary uh, in order to participate in this course. And one thing I want to mention is I think it's important to uh, try to describe the way things appear to religious traditions before evaluating them because understanding needs to come before evaluation. Otherwise, you might be evaluating a misunderstanding of a religion. You might be evaluating something that doesn't exist if you don't understand first. So this class will take first things first uh, and try to simply come to a basic understanding of the religious traditions that we will be looking at. Okay, so uh, to conclude here, why should we study religion? Um, one reason that I think is important is that I don't think you can really understand religion, or I don't think you can understand what it means to be a human being without understanding religion. So, again, to harken back what I mentioned in the last lecture, the religious life is universal in the sense that wherever you find human beings, you find religion, and it is a uniquely human phenomenon. Uh, and so if we're going to want to know what it means to be human, then one of the things, among others, that we will need to study is religion. And so this course should help us with that. Um, of course, we also want to just overcome our own basic ignorance uh, and ethnocentrism. That word means uh, of looking at things from your own particular local vantage point and not the vantage point of others. So we're going to try to overcome that limitation a bit and see how things appear from the perspectives of others. Um, and of course to comprehend our own culture, um, our own culture has been drastically shaped by religion uh, and so if we are going to understand American culture we will need to understand the basics of these religious traditions that have shaped it, and finally to achieve a global perspective. So um, we all probably are aware that the world is kind of metaphorically shrinking, so to speak, and we come into contact with people of all sorts of perspectives, and so this course will try to help us uh, gain a bit broader perspective than we may have had when we started the course. Okay, so I want to talk about a, a bit how we're going to continue here. So I have a map of uh, Europe and Africa and Asia. And you can see here uh, the different religious traditions that we'll be looking at are placed on the map in various places uh, based on where these religious traditions have become dominant. And uh, one major classification that has oftentimes been used to classify religions is between Western traditions and Eastern traditions. I'm not so, so sure how good that classification is, and in fact, later on in the course I'll be asking you to think about whether that division is a good one or not. Um, but the division basically divides the Western traditions of Christianity, Judaism, and Islam <clears throat> on the one hand, with the Eastern traditions of Hinduism, Buddhism, Taoism, and Confucianism. Um, so, sometimes when you take a course like this, oftentimes you'll study the Eastern traditions first and then the Western traditions or vice versa. Uh, I've decided to, to not take that approach, and we are going to be taking them in the order of their historical appearance. So, we will begin with Hinduism, which by most accounts is the oldest of the traditions that we'll be looking at. Uh, and then we will move on to Judaism, which is the next oldest and then to Taoism and Confucianism, and then to Buddhism, and then to the newcomers on the scene, Christianity and Islam. Um, and as we do this, again, we will want to come to a basic understanding of these traditions based on the framework I mentioned in the previous episode, and then we will also be comparing and contrasting them as we go along. So I hope you are uh, ready for the journey. I'm excited about this class, and we will dive into Hinduism next week. Thank you very much.